All right, I think I am live. Yes. Hello and welcome to the Stamp Camp. I'm Glenda Calkins, your Independent Stampin' Up! Demonstrator. It is Make It Monday and today I am going to show you how to create an apron card slash gift card holder that you can use for Mother's Day, a birthday, even Father's Day. Do you have a grill master in your house? I think this would be a very cute apron for your griller for Father's Day. So there is lots you can do with this apron card. Let's change the camera and get started. All right. Okay, so the stamp set that I used today is called the Timeless Tulips. And you can see the two apron cards that I have here. I did these for Mother's Day, but like I said, you could do it for a birthday and then change up your cardstock colors, maybe do a plaid on the front and make that a grill master apron for your griller for Father's Day. But you can see I have the Mother's Day on here. I use the timeless tulips. We have the pocket on the apron on the front for the gift card. And then it opens up on the inside. I did a little bit more stamping there so you can stamp your sentiment. On this one, I changed it up just a bit. You got your pocket on the front for your gift card, but if you flip it over, I duplicated the back side so you have another pocket so you could either put another gift card in there or I think you could probably even fit maybe a package of seeds in the back. So either way, if you had a gardener, a little gardening apron there with a gift card and maybe some seeds in the back, it opens up to the inside with some more gorgeous tulips but I've done it in the different colors. You're going to see more options on my blog this week, so stay tuned. But totally fun. You're going to be hooked on it. So let's get started. We're going to duplicate this one right here today. So the card base is the Daffodil Delight. I went with some bright spring colors. I'm so hoping that Michigan here, we're going to warm up soon. Maybe next week. I don't know. They were talking snow again. But this is four and a quarter by 11 and then scored at five and a half. Now you can get the project sheet on my blog and that will have all your cutting dimensions on there as well as a supply list if you need to order any of the supplies. You can visit my blog www.thestampcamp.com. So we're going to start with four and a quarter by five and a half. You're going to need the layering ovals dies and this is the die that I use. It is the fourth from the smallest oval. So what do I mean by that? It is measures one and three quarters by two and three quarters if you measure it out and width wise. But this is the smallest, so that's one, two, three. This is the fourth from the smallest layering ovals. Then you're going to take a ruler and you're going to measure from the top at one inch and then you're going to bring it and you're going to measure down the side at two in an or sorry on this one I'm thinking of our mat at two inches so one inch by two inch then you're going to take that oval and you're going to lay it in there so that it cuts here at the two inch and at the one inch. You should have like an eighth of an inch from that corner to the outside edge of your layering oval. And then you're going to run it through your die cut machine and die cut that out just like that. If you want to use some painter's tape to hold it in place, totally you can do that. Um, you are cutting on two layers. So once you bring that through your die cutting machine, it's going to look like this. You're going to have that piece. Save that piece. What you're going to do is you're going to take that piece, put a little adhesive on there. You're going to bring it over to this corner, line it up to the side, oops, to the side and the top, just like that. You're going to bring that same oval back in, and you're going to place it right along the edge. like so it's gonna fit 
like a puzzle. Put that back in there. There we go. Tape it down if you like, but again, you have that one eighth of an inch right there. You're gonna run it through your cut and emboss machine again, and you're going to end up with a piece that looks just like that. Now to create your mat, I took a piece of Whisper White, and this is four by five and a quarter, and we're going to measure again. This time we're gonna measure at one and an eighth inch. So one and an eighth inch, make your mark. Come down the side here, and you're going to do two and an eighth inch and make your mark. You're gonna use the same oval that you used the first time, and you're gonna place that in there so that the cutting blade is at that and up here at that, and you're gonna run it through. You'll notice that the, just the tip of it is showing on your die. Run it through, and then it's gonna come out like this. You're gonna take that, put adhesive on. You can mark and measure both sides. Whoops, I didn't put that on the right side. You can mark and measure both sides, but I found this to be the easiest way to get them exactly the same. Bring your oval in there. Bring it right to this edge of the paper. Just like that. Run it through your die cut machine. Then you're going to end up with your layering piece. And that will layer right on top, just like that, on your card. What I did, and I think is the best decision, is to make templates. So this is my card base, just like the yellow. And then this is the white. And then what you have, it's easy. You don't really even have to measure anymore your one inch and your two inch. Because you can take your plate piece. This is the inside, or the mat here, and the inside. It's four by five and a quarter. I got my template. Come in with my oval, just like this. Tape it down, and I have my cuts. So I don't have to do the measuring anymore. I can just use my template and come in. A little bit easier to do it that way. That way you can mass produce. I recommend you use a, make a template before you begin your card, just so you know your layers are all going to come out the way you want them to. All right, so this is our front of our apron, and I need a piece that is two and a half by four, and we're gonna attach that to the bottom just like this. That's our pocket for our gift card, or cash or check, or seeds if you're going to be putting a packet of seeds in there for the recipient. So again, you only want to put your glue on three sides because we don't want to seal it shut. Line it up the sides and the bottom. Oops. Just like that. Now we're going to come in with our, I used Melon Mambo, Daffodil Delight, Coastal Cabana, and then Granny Apple Green for the stems. So I'm going to start with the middle size tulip, and I'm going to do that with the Melon Mambo. And I'm going to stamp that in the center towards the top, just like that. Now I have an inside, so I'm going to stamp that at the same time. I copied the same exact way to get the inside, just like the front mat. Then I have the smaller, or the smallest bud. And we're gonna stamp that. And I'll stamp this one here. And then I need my cleaning pad. And we'll switch to the Coastal Cabana. Hello, hello.
All right. Yes, this is an oldie, oldie technique I did years and years ago, but it was fun. I like to bring things back around. Love it. All right, so there's my stamping of my tulips. Now I'll come in with the greens. And we'll do our stem. And we'll do our inside one at the same time. And our leaves. Now the stamp set comes with lots of different leaves. I just pulled one out. But you can use all three the sizes. You can turn them and make them go in different directions. That's the inside. Let's see, we'll work on this front. Just like that. All right, now we're gonna just dress up our pocket a little bit. I guess I can put this on the inside because I'm done with that. So we'll put this on the inside. Just like that. And then for the outside, for our pocket, we're just gonna run some of that ribbon. This is on the retired list, and this is our Daffodil Delight, I think it's Roached, I'm not sure how you say that, ribbon. We're gonna run that across the front like so. That looks pretty good. If you want to, you can glue it down either with liquid glue or your tape. I don't think that's I'm going to need to do that. Now we can go ahead and attach it to our front of our card. You know what I forgot to do? which I didn't stick down the top, you need to make a loop. And what you're going to do is that's your little tie for your apron. I think I'll give it a little bit of adhesive just to make sure that it's nice and stuck in place like that. I took the plain with resin dots and it just so happens to have those nice little, maybe that's too big, I'll go with a medium size maybe. It looks kind of like buttons. Just to dress that up a little bit. And then I also took the ribbon and I tied a bow just like this and a glue dot we're going to stick that right there like that Maybe I'll put a glue dot underneath there, just because that added a little weight to that. Perfect. There we go. So there's our pocket for our gift card. 
open it up and you got your inside super cute if you wanted to duplicate it like i did on the purple one you just do the same thing on the back you can use birthday i went with the happy mother's day and that was in the timeless tulips stamp set i used the smallest oval die and then the smallest scallop oval die i'm just going to pop that up with some dimensionals i don't know where my bigger ones went but the small ones work just as well super cute like i said you can make it birthday mother's day and you may happen to see this week the grill master version now you can put this anywhere you like maybe i'll put it on that side this time super cute love that little gift card holder and like i said you could put seed packet maybe in there too so double sided if you like there's a pocket on this side too inside cute cute love it so that is your make it monday project for today again if you would like that project sheet that lists the dimensions and the supplies, visit my blog, www.thestampcamp.com. Click on the download and you can print that off. That is my hostess code for April. I appreciate any and all orders. If you are new to my YouTube channel, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Click on the bell in the upper right-hand corner so you get notified when I go live. If you are on my Facebook page and you are new, make sure that you subscribe and turn on notifications so that you know when I go live. That is it for today. Thanks for stopping by.